In this tutorial, I want to show how to go from this boring default material menu, pop-up menu, like we see here, to something more interesting and custom, like we see on this device. Okay, let's review what we have at the beginning. So, here is our standard menu. It's all inside board type menu widget. We pass current board type, and uh, we have a callback for new board type selected. Logic here is pretty straightforward. It, it's just pop up menu button with board type. This is our child, and a couple of pop up menu items. Where should we start? So I'd say let's customize the background first. So color would be our project color, and then we can customize the size. So for this, we need to use constraints, and we will say that minimum bits would be the size of the screen. So okay, and uh, next we want to display our menu not on top of this widget but under it so there is a property for this called position under and as you can see we overlay it but i actually want it to be a little bit even more below so we can say offset 016 done now let's round the shape so for this we want shape border okay i don't really remember let's see how to customize it shape border custom no, it's so very complicated Around the rectangle border. Okay, I won't even like cut this out of the video so you can see how it is in real life. Okay, this is done. And uh, now it's time to customize our items. And this is where it can get tricky because uh, if we see in item builder, it requires a list of pop-up menu entry. And uh, it's not just a widget, but we shouldn't be scary of this. So let's say board type, uh, pop-up menu item. What type it's expected, pop-up menu item here. So, we use generics here, so it should be a flexible type. We can create a generic board type pop-up menu item from this parameterized by T, or we can just say board type over here, because we won't use it for anything else except our board type. Okay, now let's see what's expected here. We expect to call child. We don't really need this, so we will really override the method. So we need to override height, I guess, and uh, create state. Okay. So here we can return and here we can override the build method. Let's just return text for now just to see what's going on, what will happen. Okay, we want a constructor, so let's, let's just uh, pass title text. 
and we can create a constructor. Okay, let's override not pop up menu item, but pop up menu entry. And this way, we won't need to worry about this. The only way, the only problem here is that now we need to implement a couple of extra methods. Let's say height 65 for now. I just got this from my Figma file. You can even say that should be a constant. And represents, uh, we should pass the value. If they're the same, this means that this many item represents this way. And now in text, you can say if widget value is the list, otherwise it's about. Okay, and we don't even need the title text now, obviously. So first one is list and second one is bold. Okay, let's try it. And something is wrong. Okay, so it's not pop-up menu item state, it should be state for widget. So the problem is that we created this when it was pop-up menu entry. So now let's try to change this. Stateful widget. So what it means is that you can just try to create out of state and uh, And now it works, we have a list, we have a board. Let's add some paddings here. Now, the problem is that when we click on any of the items, nothing happens, so let's... Let's actually reuse one of the widgets we have in this project. This widget is called Tile. Implementation of this widget is very straightforward, so we can see that it's just a row with displaying an icon, some paddings, then a text, and then some extra icon if we need it. And it is a height of 65 as well. So in terms of assets, we can say it should actually depend uh, on the type of, of, of our value. And uh, again, I'm not making it generic, just because it's one specific use case for our board type menu. Otherwise, obviously, it should be way more generic than this. And what should we do on top? So on top, we should pop the value. Why we should pop a value is because if we check the implementation of pop-up menu button, and you scroll here, we will see that it's just an icon button. And when we press, we call a method called show button menu. And uh, at the end, we just call show menu. And what show menu does, it uses navigator and it pushes pop up menu road. So, in order for us to receive a value, 
At the end, we need to pop this root. Let's test it. And now, as you can see, it works. Couple of extra things. So we need to display a checkbox. And for this, let's say extra. And we already have a checkbox implementation in our project as well. It's just a stateless widget with one parameter checked. And we just use containers to draw nice looking checkboxes here. This is how it looked when it checked. This one, when it's not. Now, what's the most easy way to see if it's checked or not? We store the value of current board type. Yeah, we actually doesn't store it with the stateless widget, so our parent has it. So I'd say we can just say and pass it right here if it's an active one or not. Would be the most easy and fast way to do this. Okay. If current board type is list. So board, let's reload. And as you can see, if you have a board, it says task board. If it's a list, it says task list and checkbox is also correct. One last thing we miss is divider between them. For this, I'd say we can just use pop-up menu item with container. And here is it. Let's just mm. so you see there is a padding right here, and I don't want it, and uh, I don't want it to be such a big item. So let's try zero for padding right now. And it didn't really help. Okay. So the problem here is that we are saying that height of container is one. But as you can see, our pop up menu item has height as well, and it's at a minimum uh, gaming in interactable dimension, but we don't want this to be interactable. We want it to be just divider. And actually there is pop-up menu divider, but it doesn't allow us to customize uh, the color easily. So we want our custom one. So let's say height one is here and uh, pardon zero as well. And now it's divider like we want. Let's just customize the color here. Let's say white 10. What else do we want to change here? Let's just test that. If you click somewhere outside, we close it. If you switch the value, it works. I think that's it for today. Thank you and please subscribe.